Okay, so if someone asked the question on, you know, there, there, there is the, um, you could say the thinker, and there's the belief systems. You know, you can inquire into the nature of what am I, but also you have the limiting beliefs, and you can sort of um, let go of the limiting beliefs one by one, you know, but that's not the core. The core is the idea that I have beliefs, or that there is a believer even. So, um, uh, generally I'd say everything is related to uh, what level of consciousness the spiritual student's at. You know, as to whether they'll be able to... I look at it like, you know, the limiting beliefs are like the... Um, is like um, all the belief systems that create the perception of the ego. But if you go for the jugular, then you're going for the idea that you know, is is the thing that has belief systems even real? And what is that? So that that's going for, and then that's like, you know, it's like uh, Einstein, the level up. You know, you, you can be like ca cancelling belief after belief after belief after belief after belief. But then what is it that has beliefs? And what is that? So then that's going for the jugular, the thing that all beliefs are, are, are rubbish, you see. So as to are you are you actually avoiding going for the uh, music uh, going for you know the end the end stage by just looking at all these little limiting beliefs you know like it almost seems like there's an endless amount of belief systems so it just depends um, in the context of where generally speaking if you have a, a, a student that's new to spirituality they won't be able to take it on board that the actual thing, they won't be able to, it's like there's too many beliefs there. Um, so they're so caught up in their belief systems and their thoughts that if you said, well, what is it? What's having all these beliefs? Are you aware of anything beyond all beliefs? It would be too much for them to take. They'd just come up with another thought or another idea and they'd find it impossible to get an experience, of something beyond all belief systems. So for them then, you know, it's just like, they're hacking away at different belief systems, uh, different thoughts, until it gets refined. And then that's at some point, you know, maybe a teacher or a book or something will come along, and uh, and and they'll they read something, and they'll they'll have like a ha a ha experience. So yeah, there's something even beyond all belief systems. And then yeah, and then it's like the guidance comes just to not not bother so much with the belief system so much, but really go for. You could say the beingness or that which is beyond all beliefs, you know. Uh, so that um, uh, you'd be very lucky if that happened in your early spiritual journey to be able to take such a leap. So is it being used in a, at a certain stage? It is yes. So at a certain stage, let's say you become spiritually awake to something that you are in your nature, which is beyond all thought and all belief. Uh, then the ego, the ego actually that's true. The ego will actually be very very scared. Uh, and, and try and get you to do work which won't get you there very quickly. So it'll take a detour. Okay, don't do the advanced spiritual work. That's going to finish finish the job off quickly. Let's do the lower tier spiritual work because that's going to take longer. And I've got a, and usually the ego tends to behave if it if its uh, if its core underpinnings are coming under the spotlight. Uh, so uh, that's true. So. Um, for a reasonably advanced student, there comes the point of when do you go beyond all belief systems and try and be that which is beyond thought and beyond belief systems? And like we would say with Ramana, you know, self-inquiry. What is the nature of your true self? Is there a true self that you've awoken to, an experience which is beyond all thought and all intellectualization and all limiting ideas? So if it is, then it's more like uh, you might spend more time in the place of trying to recognize and be one with, you know, the beingness or the isness or the, the infinite state or the stillness or the silence. And uh, f forget, you know, cancelling this, that and the other, going through the, the what still remains within the ego of its limiting beliefs. So at a certain point, yeah, that, that can come like an intuitive thing. It's actually an avoidance now. Now it's time to move on to just presence, uh, beyond all thoughts. And so the, at, at a certain point, the distinction is made, the spiritual awakening is made. There's something here beyond all thought and all beliefs, and that can be recognized 
then the ego will say, well, let's just go through and find some more beliefs to cancel. So then, then, it's, then it's like, uh, for, for a student at that stage, it's an avoidance. For a student who, who uh, at a lower stage, who can't even get a glimpse of that which is beyond all thoughts, then it would be just to keep carrying on cancelling beliefs until the, the, the forest starts to thin and they start getting spiritual awakening to something uh, which is beyond. Usually, I mean, when you're working spiritually, usually a higher guidance is there and will bring you the right teacher, book, place, or situation at the right time to, um, to hire. Oh, you might get it from the in inside. I think this, all this cancelling belief is, is now actually an avoidance. And so something wants, um, wants affirmation to now just let it drop everything and just be in the silence. Thank <laughs> you.